Ever since Playboy Cardi's breakout hits, Magnolia and Woke Up Like This, Pure Born has been one of the most coveted producers in rap, producing multiple Billboard hits and for the largest artists like Drake, Kanye, and Travis Scott. But what a lot of casual fans don't know is he's a vocal artist as well, with 3 million monthly listeners of his own. However, he still hasn't managed to blow up and hit the mainstream. Well, what if I told you it's partly because of how many people he's had beef with, with the likes of Juice World, Lil Yachty, 6 ix 9 and more. I'm Rashad Fashir and this is the story of how Pure Born blackballed himself. In 2017, Pure Born had a huge year. He produced Trippy Red and 6 ix breakout song, Poles 1469, that got them their first bit of attention, and then, as we all know, he produced Magnolia and woke up like this. Playboy Cardi's breakout hits, putting him on the map. So 2017 was no short of amazing for Pierre. He'd have massive success as a producer, and many were saying he had the potential to become the next Metro Boomin. However, it wouldn't take long for him to get into his first beef, which started with him standing up for himself as a producer. And it was with the infamous 6ix9ine. In October of 2017, 6ix9ine dropped Gummo on Worldstar's YouTube channel, and the video quickly began raking in millions of views, as viewers started wondering who this crazy rapper posted with 100 bloods and the number 69 tatted all over him was. And the song? Well, it was produced by Pierre, except the beat was never cleared by Pierre, and according to him, the beat was stolen. The beat originally came from a beat pack Pierre had sent to Trippy Red. Trippy decided to use two of them, and without letting Pierre know, passed the third one to 6ix9ine. At the time, 6ix9ine and Trippy Red were formerly on the same label and were very close, except they eventually fell out and everybody took Trippy's side, including Pierre. And one day, to his surprise, Gummo, 6ix9ine's breakout hit, was put out for free on YouTube and SoundCloud. After seeing how successful the song was, 6ix9ine's label immediately began trying to clear the beat. The executives were telling him, Because they were like, it's gonna be a big record, it's gonna be life changing for you, like, it's more situations out of this. Pierce said he didn't care how much they were gonna pay him, he was not clearing the song for release, and explained he wanted no part in it. I never wanted to have anything to do with that song just because of how they went about releasing it. It was very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Very like, f you, basically. Explaining he didn't have any part in the recording process. I wasn't involved in none of that. I don't even know when they recorded it. Right. I don't like stuff like that. The label was shocked, but a miscommunication due to him being out of the country led to the song being okayed by accident. So many no's to where it was a miscommunication mm -hmm. that a no turned into a yes. He was in Australia. I was in Australia, bro. I didn't say, I never said yes. But somehow, they miscommunicated or faked that they thought he said okay and put it out on all platforms without Pierre's permission. So one day, randomly, he saw it released on his phone. But this was on my phone. I see gum on Apple Music. I was like, ah. <laughs> Pierre was furious. He had actually recorded his own vocals over the beat, and before 6ix9ine dropped the song, Pierre was planning on dropping his own version of the song himself. However, when 6ix9ine dropped Gummo, it ruined everything for him. Pierre would come out against the song, calling 6ix9ine an op, and said him and Trippy would no longer be working due to the song being out, which he posted to both his Twitter and Instagram. Eventually, all this beef led to legal action, where in 2018, Pierre filed a lawsuit and was given 75% of the song after it was settled outside of court plus a fat check. So in January of 2018, Pierre tweeted, I got 75% of Gummo. 6ix9ine clapped back, threatening Pierre. But that was that. In the end, Pierre took a huge financial W, but it wasn't great for his career as a solo artist. And this was the first sign of Pierre's ego, except back then you could argue he was just standing up for himself and not see it as being stubborn and unrealistic. The next beef Pierre would get into was with Tory Lanez, and it was due to Tory wanting to remix Playboy Cardi's Magnolia which Pierre had produced, of course. Someone sent Pierre a text asking if Tory Lanez could use the Magnolia instrumental for a remix and asked Pierre to send it to Tory. Pierre said, hell no. Cardi even came out and said himself, we don't do that remix stuff. Don't remix my music. Stop asking my guy Pierre for beats. Cardi's reaction was in response to Tory Lanez getting someone else to reproduce the beat for him to rap over. And I'm not gonna lie, after hearing the remix, Pierre made the right choice. And the worst part about it is how bad the remix is and the beat. But there was never any bad blood from this either. It was honestly much more embarrassing for Tory. However, the next beef Pierre got into would truly start to foreshadow what was to come. The next rapper Pierre Bourne decided to beef with was the late Juice World when he was a rookie, fresh off his breakout hits, like all girls are the same. A lot of people don't know about this, and Pierre Bourne even produced one of Juice's biggest singles posthumously, Bad Boy, featuring Young Thug, 
which even had a lyrical lemonade video. At first, there didn't really seem to be any bad blood between the two, as Juice was known for how positive of a person he was. Until one day, when Pierre Bourne made a post on Instagram, claiming Juice World allegedly stole Pierre Bourne's album cover concept, stating, Y'all gonna take my album cover too? Alongside various vomit emojis. He also shared his own PS1 theme cover of The Life of Pierre 4, showcasing the extremely original piece of artwork he had come up with. To be honest, it's just a PlayStation 1 theme and the art itself is completely different. Juice World's Death Race for Love just had cars in it as well and actually had more creativity. Ironically, Pure wouldn't even be allowed to drop the PlayStation cover due to copyright, so fans were confused and quickly found out Pure had ulterior motives. It turned out Pure was jealous of Juice World. Pure Born and Juice were both signed to the same label, Interscope, and at the time, Pure was calling out a certain executive for pushing his album back, Aaron Sherrod, aka Digital Dash, who was working very closely with Juice World. Furthermore, Juice World previewed a song with the same beat Pierre had previewed months before. Back then, Pierre was really mad at Interscope, who had shelved him, meaning they weren't allowing him to drop music since the label thought he wouldn't sell well. And giving a young up-and-comer kid to Pierre, Juice World, free reigns to drop whenever, really pissed Pierre off. When Pierre Bourne was finally able to drop The Life of Pierre 4 in 2020, it sold 8,000 units. Juice World sold 165,000, 20 times the amount the year prior on the album where he quote unquote stole the cover art. So yeah, the label did make the right decision and it was just embarrassing for Pierre. The next rapper Pierre had problems with was Lil Yachty. At one point, these two were really close and if you look them up on YouTube, they have tons of songs together. However, around 2021, things got tense between the two. It began when the rollout for Pierre's The Life of Pierre 4 began and Lil Yachty's Lil Boat 3 dropped. In an interview, Yachty was asked if there was going to be any more music between Yachty and Pierre. Yeah, born is weird, bro. I don't want to talk about Pierre. For real. Yeah. Yeah, man. Me, me and Pierre used to be real tight. I don't know what's up, man. I don't know, bro. I don't even want to talk about it because, bro, I don't really know what state of our relationship is. So Yachty tried to stay respectful, but he still called Pierre out. This was really weird, and to fans, all of a sudden, the relationship had done a 180. At one point, they even had a collab tape in the works in the beginning of 2020. Are ready for some bow and Pierre? Yeah! A whole, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A whole tape? But after that, they went radio silent about it and never came out. And when Yachty dropped Lil Boat 3, Pierre only made it onto one track. And the reason fans speculated why Pierre didn't want to do the tape was Why the f am I doing a tape with Lil Yachty? Like, what would he actually get out of that? Yachty is the coldest he's ever been in his career right now. So, what benefit would Pierre get from doing a tape with Yachty? Which is true. Yachty hadn't had a hit or have an album sell well during that time period. Eventually, they reconciled, but Pierre and Yachty have never worked since. And Yachty, well, his dry spell ended, and he's only gotten bigger. So, Pierre ended up burning a really big bridge. Which is a shame, because their sounds fit really well together. But Pierre's beef wasn't just limited to mainstream artists either. It was all-inclusive. He didn't discriminate, and he would beef with a lot of underground rappers as well, some that would later surpass him. The first was Lancey Foe when he was a small rapper, and it was due to a song Lancey had sampled, Foreign by Playboy Cardi in his largest song at the time, India. And no one even knew Pierre had a problem with it until, at one of Pierre's shows, he randomly got on the stage and screamed, this at the time, Lancey was a small niche artist who probably wanted to work with Pierre. Honestly, it was completely unnecessary. As a producer, if anyone, Pierre should understand how sampling works. And since the beat was put on all streaming platforms, it meant it was cleared. So the issue was just Pierre's ego. Most people didn't even know Lancey sampled the song, and the song is so much smaller compared to Cardi's song. So once again, Pierre's ego got the best of him. Lancey and Cardi would eventually become quite close, furthering the rift between Cardi and Pierre. And in today's scene, Lancey is a much bigger and more relevant artist than Pierre. Pierre wasn't just beefing with other artists, he'd have beef with his own artists that he'd signed to his own label. Pierre's own artists, Shavo and Shark, began dissing Pierre in 2022 and 2023 claiming they weren't getting any help from him, and Shavo called out Pierre for refusing to take him on tour, his own artist, despite landing his own large song himself, 
Michigan. He also said he was looking for producers, implying he'd no longer work with Pierre. Since Pierre is so claimed as a producer in rap, he has some really big connections, one of them being the man himself, Drake. Except their collaborative relationship stretches further than just songs being produced. Drake and Pierre have two songs together, where Drake sent him features. The craziest part is, fans like myself didn't even know until Drake commented, my biggest regret was not finishing the last two bars on Drunken Nasty. Basically, Drake is on Pierre's popular song Drunken Nasty, but because the last two bars weren't complete, Pierce said no thanks to the Drake feature and decided to drop the song with him only. In a crazy turn of events, the song went viral on TikTok and became his most popular song ever. Some fans even asked Pierre to put Drake on the remix, as Drake has skyrocketed a number of artists' careers over the years, saying it could have been Pierre's breakout moment. Furthermore, Drake has a verse on Pierre's other huge song, Poof, which is actually really good. Go check it out. So instead of trying to put them out, he just moved on. We had him on Poof. We had that man on Drunk and Nasty. You'll never hear it. <laughs> but shout out to OVO, man. Drake just dropped me. And he was laughing like he didn't fumble two huge hits. And by this point, fans began to realize Pierre was just wired different because he had so many genuine connections that he just let evaporate. The next person Pierre would have beef with was Trippy Red. And this one was kind of sad because Pierre and Trippy go way back. In fact, Trippy was the one who originally gave Pierre his first entry into the music industry as a producer, back when Pierre was broke, engineering sessions in Atlanta. Hi, Pierre Bourne. It's one of my favorite producers. Uh, um, when I had started music and I had moved out here to Atlanta, and my engineer was Pierre. However, in 2021, Pierre decided to charge Trippy Red $80,000 for a beat that wasn't even Trippy Red's song. It was a song he was featured on. Trippy thought they were friends and was hurt and made a response saying Pierre forgot where he came from. He's always forget where they came from. I remember when he was just engineering in the studio, living out the studio. And that ultimately, Trippy was the one who gave Pierre his shot to be in the industry. Hoping gave him a shot. It's crazy because I so happened to be the that gave the a shot. Forget where they come from. Wanna charge their homies eighty thousand dollars for beats now? Like y'all is corny. At first, Pierce said cap claiming Trippy was lying, and it was actually a good week for Pierre. His album sales went up by eight hundred percent. Trippy, still mad, took to Instagram. I made somebody's sales go up eight hundred percent just from speaking, without even saying their name. You know. That's a blessing to even know I got power like that. I'm proud of him. Pierre Bourne took to Instagram to respond and tweeted, Ain't nobody make my sales go up, 799%, but God. When Pierre posted his response, Trippy left a genuinely sad comment saying, Wish it was number one. Honestly, you know what's up. I remember us in the studio coming up with the whole video game sound you got from my childhood playlist. You can look it up. It's on the 1400-800 YouTube, he said. Bro, this is nothing new. I've always helped you. Remember that you just let me down as a brother. Pierre even decided to take the beef further and diss Trippy in his song Practice, where he says, Lying about 80 racks, you going broke. They eventually made up and came back on good terms, but the relationship was severely damaged and they haven't worked since. The second to last rapper Pierre Bourne had beef with was Ken Carson, another underground rapper or at least one at the time. And like many of the people Pierre had problems with, it came to light randomly. At this point, Pierre was huge and for the newer generation, one of the OGs. So in 2021, fans were shocked when Ken Carson was asked if he wanted to be on a Pierre beat on Twitter and he replied, nope. It turns out Pierre had egoed him. Ken said, Pierre had told Ken Carson he wasn't on the same level as him. And ever since that day, he's been going up saying, no beef, I just wouldn't be comfortable working with someone who said that about me. A very fair and incredibly mature response on Ken Carson's end, and very disappointing from Pierre. Once again, another artist that got dissed by Pierre Bourne and then went on to surpass them. In this case, Ken got much bigger than Pierre Bourne. And it's a shame because Ken Carson's early production took a lot of inspiration from Pierre on songs like Yale, and they could have made some great music together, but Pierre's ego had to get in the way of it. The final rapper Pierre had beef with was the man who arguably made Pierre the mainstream producer he became, Playboy Cardi. Playboy Cardi and Pierre are one of modern rap's most accomplished and notable producer-rapper duos. They blew up together, worked extensively once they were both up, but all of a sudden when Whole Lotta Red dropped, Cardi's most recent album, Pierre had only produced two songs, and they were old. Prior to Whole Lotta Red, Pierre had produced both of Playboy Cardi's breakout hits, Magnolia and Woke Up Like This, as well as six songs off his debut album, self-titled. 15 out of 19 songs on his sophomore album, Die Lit, and multiple iconic leaks. 
Fans first noticed tensions between them when one of the songs on Whole Lotta Red, Punk Monk, Cardi said, I thought I had Pierre but the label tricked me. One of the standout lyrics from the album, which was Cardi saying he thought Pierre wasn't signed and was disappointed when he found out he couldn't sign him. But it wasn't just Cardi who was annoyed with Pierre. Pierre wasn't happy either. When Pierre dropped his album, Cardi dropped his music video for Sky on the same day. Pierre got mad and tweeted, he doesn't want to see me glow, this shit ridden. Cardi and Pierre have a lot of overlapping fans, so Pierre thinking Cardi posted the music video to overshadow him might be justified, but it was still a stretch. Furthermore, like I said earlier, Pierre and Ken Carson, Cardi's artist, aren't on good terms, making things even more tense between the two. And by the time 2022 rolled around, they weren't seen with each other, and it became pretty clear they weren't on great terms. In 2022, during a disagreement Cardi had with ASAP Rocky, Pierre Bourne tweeted out, don't bite the hand that feeds you, referring to one of Cardi's close friends. That same close friend, Opium Baby, took to Twitter and said, screw Pierre, I had to beg Cardi to let you in the studio, explaining Cardi didn't even want to work with Pierre anymore. Cardi and Pierre falling out or just not seeing eye to eye was a full circle moment, bringing us to today, where Pierre Bourne doesn't really have any relationships left and isn't hot neither as a producer nor as an artist. So I don't think anybody at this point can say Pierre Bourne doesn't deserve to be where he's at today. It was over the course of many years, but slowly he burnt every bridge and relationship he managed to create. I made this video because often fans of Pierre come to his defense, like I used to, and blame the label or casual listeners for not giving him a chance, when in reality, it's really all Pierre's fault, which is a shame. And it's kind of hard to understand until you see the full picture, like in this video. But anyways, let me know, was Pierre actually justified in any of this? I don't really think so. My name is Rishav Thanks for watching, and see you next time.